Transcendental functions using chain rule works like any other function using chain rule. Here are all of the trig functions uh, using the chain rule where u is the inner function and then each of the trig functions are uh, the outer function. So again, you take the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function, no different than we've done already. So let's jump right to an example. Example six is saying that um, we want to take the derivative of y is equal to cosine of 5x. Looking at the inner function, that's 5x, and the outer function is cosine of x. So I would have to take the derivative just of the cosine, which is negative sine of 5x, times the derivative of the inner function, which is 5. So what we end up with is um, sine, negative sine of 5x, which was the derivative of the outer function, times the derivative of the inner function, which was 5. And then we just polish it off a little bit. Now pause it and try some of the other ones. I'll put the answers up. So pause the video and give these a shot. This is what I'm getting for the rest of them. Just keep in mind, I think for what could cause some confusion is down here for the last one for f of theta is the secant produces two functions. So just to point out, the inner function is three theta over pi, and the outer function is still secant. So when I'm taking the derivative of the outer function, it is all of this right here in highlighted in yellow. It's secant of u times tangent of u. And then finally, we take the derivative of u, which is the inner function which is just three pi. And then polish it off, we tend to put the constant here out in front. Now, looking at some of the next ones here, you have to, the reason why I made separate problem and the same, they did the same in the book, was because depending on where the parentheses are, it becomes really important. Now, if for the first one, the implied parentheses is like this, the x is the only thing that's being squared. So that means that we have an outer function of sine and an inner function of 4x squared. For the next one, this one says that take um, sine of 4 first, which is a constant, times the derivative of x squared, essentially what it becomes. So you could treat this like a, just a regular old number. Like if you had the number 4 without the sign, you would just take 2 times 4 times x to take the derivative. Well, this works the same. You end up with 2 times sine of 4 times x to the first to do that one. So if we look at each of these, you get dy. Oh, that's a stry. Okay, let's try that again. dy dx is equal to the derivative of the outer function is cosine of 4x squared times the derivative of the inner function is 8x. I'm going to polish it off a little bit. We always put the 8x out in front. Cosine of 4x squared. For the second one, you end up with dy dx is equal to, now we said the sine, so all we have to do is use the power rule for this one. So it ends up being 2 sine of 4, which is all just one number, x. And that's it. Now, I'm going to have to put in a parenthesis here because it's not clear that it's not sine of 4x. So if you forget to put that in, you now change the meaning. So what some people do is rewrite it like this. They write 2x sine of 4. Then there's no reason to misunderstand that. For the next one, you would do a rewrite, which is sine of I mean, you don't have to, but the only thing that's being squared is in there. So it might make it easier if you wrote it as 16x squared, like so. And then we get dy dx. Or else you have to use the chain rule twice. dy dx is cosine of 16x squared times. Now take the derivative of that is 32x, the interior function. So we end up with 32 x times cosine of 16x squared.
for this one, um, again, I, I've been asked about this in class, but just remember this square here means that it's the sine function that's being squared, not the x. So for some people, it helps rewriting this as sine of x squared. So now the outer function is the square function, dy dx. So we get 2 sine of x, that's just taking the derivative of the outer function, times the derivative of the inner function is cosine of x. So when I simplify this, it's 2 sine of x cosine of x. And if it's a multiple choice question or sometimes even on your homework assignments, I recognize that as a double angle for, for um, sine of x. So therefore, it becomes sine of 2x after all that. But that's using one of the trig identities. So if you're still a little shaky on the trig identities, it might be a good time to make sure you do the trig uh, folder if you haven't done that one yet. Same for this one. It would help to write sine of x to the 1 half. And then we do, do the power rule first. And the inner function now is the trig. It becomes 1 half sine of x to the negative 1 half times cosine of x. When I polish that off a little bit, we get cosine of x in the numerator and 2 times the square root of sine of x in the denominator. Now for um, the chain rule in trig, oftentimes you'll have trig to some power and then taking the derivative of some other, or taking, no, taking the trig function, like sine of some other function. So there is a little bit of a memory device. I know your book doesn't have this, but it's just a way to, un if you think of unpacking um, multiple layers of a function or a composite function, there could be a function within a function within, within another function. Essentially, that happens for, for trig quite a bit. So there's a little memory device that helps. For example, this one has both the power rule. So there's essentially three layers to this, the power, which is the outermost function, times, then you have to use the cosine is the next layer, and then the innermost layer is 4x. So essentially, this has three things going on, but we see it so often that um, this memory device, like PTA, is just like the Parent Teacher Association, um, you do the power, then the trig, and then the angle. So the first thing you're gonna do is just take the derivative of the power. So do the power action, which is in this uh, case is three cosine squared of four X. So that's the power. Then you do the trig part. So you finish the power. So taking the derivative, the trig is cosine. So that would be times negative sine of four X. Now we're done with the trig part of it. What's the derivative of the angle? The angle is always what's inside the trig function. So that's gonna be four. So here I have all of the pieces that will give me the derivative, dy dx, or y prime, is equal to, let's reorganize it a little bit. It's negative, because I have to multiply these three parts. 12 sine of four x times cosine squared of four x, and we're done. Now try it for the second one, same thing. The power, if I'm gonna highlight the inner function, that's the innermost function, then the tangent is the next part, and the outer function is the power. So you're just gonna do four tangent cubed of 3x plus 4. Now you've done the power portion of it, you move into the trig portion. So the p is the power, t is then the trig part. So what's the derivative of tangent? Well, that's secant squared of 3x plus 4. That's what's left. And then you do the derivative of the angle. In this case, that's 3. Polish it off a little bit. y prime is equal to, multiply, we get 12 and then secant squared 3x plus 4. You can, you can put these in any order as long as the coefficient is out in front. Um, I tend to always put the highest degreed uh, trig function at the end. 
like so. Okay, 